Hello, amateurs. 10 minutes after the final whistle at Twickenham, and I am absolutely emotionally drained. Welcome back to our Six Nations series, and I've got everyone's favourite pundit with me today, who's unfortunately looking a little bit sad. Elko, how are you doing? TT, listen, congratulations. Cracking, cracking test match. And um, yeah, I'm absolutely gutted, but um, every cloud is a silver lining, and, and England are back. Twickenham's crazy, baby. Yeah, it was a hell of a performance from England in the end. They were super brave throughout and, well, for the most part, actually. They had a couple of periods where I thought they kind of went back within themselves a little bit too much and I thought maybe that played into Ireland's hands a little bit. What were your sort of general sort of overall, overall thoughts, though, Malcolm? Yeah, it was, I mean, the, um, you know, England scored early and straight away, I'm like, God, it's like Twickenham, our, Twickenham was buzzing. The crowd wanted to be, this has been coming for a long time, you know, and um, the crowd wanted something to cheer and get on with. So when England had such a great start, it was like, um, and then they were playing so well, I felt they got every bounce of the ball. Um, You know, uh, I know they had the try disallowed when Furbank was a judge, which was pretty tight, but it it just felt like everything was going England's way and, and, and nothing was going for Ireland. And yet, I couldn't believe it. Like we we were up at half time, you know. We were we were there, and that's you know. I keep likening this team to to New Zealand. That that that's kind of they they never go away, and and yeah, it was just. But I thought England were mighty, you know, and um, you know we we spoke about it in our pre match pod, and it was name checked uh, in in some of the. I haven't seen all the posts. I've just seen DC talking about it, but. Um, and man of the match, uh, Earls, who was class today. But, but clearly, the shit that was spoken about during the week was was put on the walls. And we got to, you know, guys got to learn from this. Stop being arrogant idiots and giving people fuel. Just stop, right? Let the boys go at it. You don't need to be looking for a clickbait or, although I like to know, um, uh, or, 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 you know, or headlines as, as pundits, as Heathslip or Stringer or O'Gara, I, I believe. So, you know, uh, I, England, England maybe needed a spark to go, but by God, they played amazing, and I'm really glad to see it. And, and um, they played really good rugby. It was brilliant. Yeah, Benno was actually quite emotional after the game, wasn't he? Yeah. While he was collecting his <clears throat> right, correctly, a judge man of the match decision, which was he was so far the man of the match, it was almost embarrassing. Actually, he was England's best player by a country mile, amongst yeah. a lot of good performances as well. I want, to, I want to start off, though, with the try, because this is something that I've said when I've said when we've been looking forward to England performances, I've said if they get the chances, they've got to just be really ruthlessly efficient. And Furbank showed ambition to run that kickback. And then they were just so fast. And it was a four on three. Right. And how many times have we seen England overcomplicate or just get the passing wrong? The accuracy is not quite right. However you want to say it. But they executed that four on three absolutely perfectly and left Ollie, Ollie Lawrence the joy of slamming the ball down uh, just on the try line. I think I, th- I would have preferred him to go a little bit further in goal, to be honest. But I was so happy with that start for England. And they then continued, which was impressive. Yes, yeah, what we spoke about, wasn't it? We, we said like that um, they'd look to, to uh, if, if Ireland kicked loosely, they'd look to, you know, go for that and... Um, I think Nash got injured in that in that play, didn't he? Um, which you know we'll talk talk about that in a second. Uh, in terms of the selection, you know, picking a six two is is high risk, and unfortunately, Ireland have been absolutely bitten really really badly now. But look, that's that's not an excuse because I think England were were still you know still would have won the game. Um, but uh, the way they they took that, it was great when they showed the the overhead from behind, and you could literally see. It's like the drills we all rugby guys do day in day out. You know, you do your three v twos, your four v threes, and it was just absolutely bang, bang, bang in on the corner. And they took they took their opportunity really, really well. Um, and for all the the crap they've been given about not been attacking. That that was you know they finished it as as the best teams in the world do you know it was great yeah and actually talking about the the six two bench and the injury issues that Ireland had I don't think England took enough advantage of that situation and in fact I think Ireland actually possibly weirdly benefited from it a couple of times because Keenan was on the right wing for a while and he won uh, aerial battles won from a kickoff 
another one further on that led directly to Lowe's second try, I think it was. And then later in the game, England had basically Tommy Freeman against Jameson Gibson Park during a box kick battle, and England didn't win any of those. Somehow the kicking wasn't accurate enough or whatever. So the opportunities were there based on those, you know, that selection choice. But I don't think it really played out. And also with Gibson Park, he was the one who provided that incredible catch pass for James Lowe's second try. Again, I think it was the second yeah. try. So, yeah, while it caused Ireland to reshuffle a lot and there was clearly a lot of, you know, I, I just thought they dealt, Ireland dealt with those changes really well. Oh, no, it was, you know, it, it all went wrong, right? I mean, you just would never have imagined, you know, in the first opening three minutes of your right winger who's who's been playing pretty well gets injured. It just throws things out. You know, the whole point was Keenan coming back, his full back. Um, I thought they dealt with it really well. I mean, uh, Frawley was was class and, and dealt with some high balls, some some filthy um, uh, spiral bombs from forward. Dealt with really really well. I th- I think you know without wanting to skip ahead too much, I th- I think we're we're really uh, came home to roost was actually the last couple of minutes with Murray at nine, who I thought was really really poor in t- in terms of managing those last couple of minutes. Um, to give England a, a chance to go go and, and win the game sort of thing. But no, I mean, you can't fault uh, any player or anything like that. And, uh, listen, you, it's just unlucky that guys got injured, you know. Um, and both were HIAs um, just because of the ferocity and, 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 you know, clearly boys trying to bang each other. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. I don't think Farrell should change anything. Um, I, th- I think he should keep doing what we're doing, uh, beaten by a, by a better team with, with I think... They they kind of out farreled us in a way in terms of the emotion game and the momentum game and you know as you said uh, with Earl's talking after the game clearly it was huge emotion so not only were they talking about the stuff that had been written about them and that's going to drive people mad like it's just going to you know it's it as Farrell says it's a man test right so you're you're saying that we're not better than you know or people are saying that we're crap and and you guys are better you know, men, better players than us. That's going to, you know, come back. I mean, of course, then, you know, raised the whole thing about uh, Jamie George and, and, and bless him, you know, his mother passing away. And that was clearly spoken about this week. So it was huge, huge. And they used it well, as opposed to it being a weight on their shoulders. They looked like a team over there to play. Um, and, and fair play to both. Whatever has been done in terms of flicking that switch and attack, they attacked today. And they, they I mean, we said it in the pre-pod, they came for us and they did. And they got us. Yeah, England's attack was pacey. It had a lot of purpose to it. And it had a lot of variation as well, which I was really impressed with. A couple of things. The Nash thing, the injury. First of all, like it was a brilliant read for him to come in and try and smack Freeman. It was just one of yeah. those weird situations where Freeman managed yeah. to brace himself right on yeah. the point of impact. I don't think he even particularly knew it was coming, but he just got it right. So that was really unfortunate for Nash. Then yeah. one of the other players you mentioned there, Jamie George, and I've mentioned this, I think, in the preview to this game, when I've said we, we don't see him too much at the moment, you know, but he's still doing his nuts and bolts really well. And that's off the base of the fact that England haven't really played. But my God, it was like 2016 today with Jamie George, like charging through holes, getting on offload lines and stuff like that. He actually had the ball in his hands, which we know he can do. So I was delighted for him and for England because it's just... It's uh, evidence that England had got through gaps and were making space. So uh, that was magic. Yeah, you, you said you said uh, in pre-pod that probably the reason why we haven't seen Jamie is because England have been not, haven't been getting from f- football, and they managed to do that today. They were very accurate in their in their rooks, and Ben Earl made that break and then pops it inside. And I loved it because who was who was chasing him down? Um, and, and you saw Jamie George look and it was Dan Sheehan, his opposite number. And he just went and then he put the brakes on and came back and did the, didn't want to get caught. But no, he was <laughs> he was really good today. Um, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was, I mean, I'm delighted for him, you know, after everything that's happened for him. And he, he played really, really well today. And interestingly, what, what really surprised me was, was actually they took him off. So obviously probably his GPS was up and everything else. And they, they had faith, which they haven't done in Dan's come, to come on previous games but they they obviously realized how important the bench was going to be and um, particularly with with Ireland having to make so many changes early doors 
Yeah, and talking about the bench and that substitution, that was the whole front row that came on about 50 minutes. And the scrum, I would say, Ireland probably had the ascendancy in. They were certainly edging forward in most t- times when it was moving one way or the other. Ireland probably had the edge. I think the, the penalties went kind of 50-50. Uh, there were a couple couple for each side, I think. So, But England, saw, I, I would say they managed it well, you know, because I, I think Ireland were probably the stronger side in the scrum. Yeah, I, I think they did manage well. I, I don't know how many scrums there were. It didn't seem to be loads. Um, but certainly any 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 kind of pressure scrums, there was quite a few where, where England had really big attacks and coughed the ball up like Furbank when, when, when um, Lawrence scored it on the post when that was brought back and, and you thought England are going to go here but really strong scrum and stuff. And I think the first one was Furlong got done. Um, Genji put him under pressure and then... Ireland had that one where Porter got up and 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 um, Omani came in and got the angle and the ball just popped up and we had a nice break up the side. We should, probably should have got a penalty from that. Um, but I think the ref was... I felt the referee didn't really want to give away penalties. That's not a bad thing for both sides. I think he tried to let as much go as possible and only when he really needed to or when England or Ireland were very, very clever. The, the one um, where Toji uh, held... I uh, can't remember who it was in... Um, over the ball, and, and I think it might have been for Daly's kick actually. Um, you know, some really clever play there, but I, th- I thought he had a good game to be fair. Um, uh, the Georgian chap, I thought he was all right. Yeah, the breakdown was absolutely fiercely contended, and there, was, there were so many breakdowns. I think that you could probably have penalized both teams, or you know, there were so many yeah. really close calls. And I, I think there was somewhere, you know, if you're you know, wearing you got white eyes and you're looking at that thinking we should have had the penalty and and vice versa the other way so it was a really tough day i think for him at the breakdown but i think overall he did he did a really excellent job um now just in terms of how the game went in the first half and we've kind of spoken about this already england would kind of had most of the territory most of the yeah. possession and were doing lots of good work and then george ford missed the penalty i think when it was eight six which would have taken it to eleven six go down the other end and then uh yeah, Crowley steps up and bangs over one for for twelve eight at half time. This is then a really challenging psychological mental moment for England. Like, yeah. what do you think was said at half time? I don't know because because um, me and Harty, my my rugby wife, we, we were voice noting away and sort of going, "How are we? How are we in the league? Like, what is this? Is this is huge for for England? You know, uh, in terms of how that? What do you say to a team that's?" You know, for, you know. To be fair, they they dominated the first half in possession, um, and in territory. I think it was forty five, fifty percent uh, in in Ireland's sort of um, middle third sort of thing, and and um, you know had a try disallowed. Probably had a couple of other chances from the line out in the bottom right hand corner there. Um, I I don't know what was said. Uh, you know. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, and it's it's going to come. I, I I am I'm gobsmacked at their that they hung on on the fitness levels as well. I, I thought I, I was confident going into the second half, going yeah, we're going to get these guys on the fitness levels. But actually, they really hung on. Probably that's m- maybe because of the changes that Borthwick made and brought the boys on that, that added to that. So um, yeah, it, whatever was said worked. Uh, maybe whatever was going to be said was changed when I I, I don't know if you saw. I, I, what was going on with Farrell and Borthwick at half time? Whether when they were going down the tunnel, something happened. I, I couldn't work out what was. I, it was really weird uh, whether something was happening when he was take, when Crawley was taking the kick or something. But clearly there was something going on. Um, you know, Borthwick's history of this with Leicester, um, and and maybe he 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 just was kicking things around and, and saying just get out there and take heads off. You know, which which they did. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the way, um, <clears throat> so that last penalty in the first half was given away because England tried to play when they didn't have an advantageous situation in their own half. It was they played out the back to Chesham who carried it in. And it, although that was a bad decision because it wasn't on in that stage, I was just really hopeful that they didn't look at that and go, right, we've got to not do that anymore. Because we, I think we all agreed that if England shut up shop and tried to just play inches and percentages, then they were never going to win. So I was really delighted that they managed to come out. And actually, because Ireland scored very soon into the second half as well, England then, I guess, were forced to sort of continue along the line that they had been, which was to play as much as they could. You know, they kicked at times when they needed to, I think. 
but they really did try and play through the middle third a lot more. Oh, they played way more, way more. Um, I mean, how many touches did Femi get? You know, I was I was, I was taking the piss during the week, and I, you know, what's the point of picking him a bit like Aaron Dillon? He got loads of touches. They gave him loads of ball. Furbank had loads of touches. They were really clever. They played way more than rugby than Ireland. Ironically, all of Ireland's stuff came a lot of from what you would call Borthwick ball, right? So lots of box kicks, turnovers, guys getting over the ball, and then they 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 took advantage. So it was just really interesting dynamic that actually. I mean, we played some good stuff. At, you know, don't get me wrong. We we when we did play, we, we did okay, and there was lots of stuff that we we said about the Wales game where guys were coming to the nine and then turning back in and you know we unpicked that rush defense really well for our first try um you know just just having guys ahead of the ball and and then popping off when when actually England's attack had gone past us just really clever stuff um but a lot of our success came from from pressure um and and, and kicking the ball so um yeah interesting how, how the uh, the cards fall sometimes in test match rugby way it goes yeah yeah. Um, the other really interesting tactical battle I thought happened at the line out because early doors, yeah. England gave Ireland the front a lot and they took it a lot. Uh, although there was one really bad error from them when Omani, I think either the throw was a bit too high or Omani yeah. didn't get up quick enough. That was a bad error from Ireland because that was completely unchallenged. And England were trying to throw to the tail where it was quite well competed by by Ireland. And I think they won one yeah. and then maybe disrupted another couple. Yeah. So England switched then then started getting given the front and taking it, setting up mini yeah. malls or trying to play from there. And I just thought it showed a real sort of tactical maturity to to uh, prioritise getting the ball over quality of possession, which I think is where they let themselves down against Wales. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think Borthwick won the battle there with with O'Connell. Um, another uh, pal of mine, uh, Donny uh, from Terranure, he, he was just texting there saying, you know, England did exactly what New Zealand did to us in the line eight um, in the quarter where they they squeezed our space and took our space and, and the referee didn't. And you would have thought we would, we would have learned from that to, to stop and go, you're taking our gap, you're squeezing us. Um, but you're right, it was very evident that, you know, England were trying to uh, got a lot of success to start at the tail, and then Burn was starting to compete and winning ball against. Uh, I can't remember who was at the back there, and then you're right; they just started. I think Martin at the front was just taking. You know, as a hooker, that's a dream, right? You just go, just take the ball, it's on, just take it on. And they had plays to play off that, and had lots of possession, were able to maul and put us under immense pressure. And yeah, we'll have to look at that. Um, maybe they had one one extra line out forward through selection potentially or or had seen something where if they have three options it made it easy but yeah uh, 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 we we called again that that's we thought you know line out was was still a worry and uh, England I think um, won that battle today yeah I think so overall it was uh, it was a very good contest though um somebody else who contested every inch of everything he did was Bundy Aki, who I think was Ireland's, probably Ireland's best player. He had a moment in the first half when he carried and absolutely smashed through George Martin, um, along with other great breakdown work, great tackling, great carrying. I just think he's continued his form of last season and he's, I, I think he's the outstanding 12 on the planet at the moment. Yeah, he's got everything, hasn't he? He's, he's, he's developed his game um, a lot since um, joining... Connacht all those years ago and and, and, and really um, becoming a, an Irish legend um, in that 12 jersey. He, um, we, we again, we called it, he was going to go after Ford and he went after Ford. He, he, he hunted him down a few times um, and, and ran at him, um, which is, you know, yeah, fair enough. But the the amount of turnovers he gets and, and um, the big hits he puts in, he's, he's an immense player for, for us. And um, yeah, felt a bit sorry for him today, but uh, you can't win them all. No. Two other players from Ireland that I'd like to pick out, though, were Dor Doris and Van der Fleer, who I just thought were a complete pain in the arse, oh. basically, all day. I thought that their work at the breakdown and the tackle in particular were... I mean, England did manage to get a decent amount of fast possession, but when it was slowed down, it was usually one of those two that, that did that. Yeah, Van der Fleer, he got so many turnovers. He's just so, so good. Um, and uh, brave and puts his head... You know, and he, he's kind of, he, he's been quiet, I think, um, you know, since player of the year 
two seasons ago now, I think. Um, but he's, yeah, I thought he played really well today. I thought he was really, I mean, I didn't hear, I didn't hear Underhill's name once today, weirdly. Um, you know, but that doesn't, he was probably doing a lot of unseen work. And I'm sure those, if you watch the game again, I'd imagine those guys were just battering each other. And um, I saw, I, I saw him getting thrown a lot of times and all you see him on the floor and it was probably Underhill hitting him sort of thing. Um, but yeah, he was, he was, the, the, both those boys were, 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 were really, really good. I thought when Omani went off, Doris did a good job in, in captaining, captaining Ireland as well. Um, what do you think? I, I thought, in, for me, England's standout player today in attack, actually, weirdly, was Mitchell. Without doing a lot, he, he was so threatening. Ireland had clearly, clearly were, were worried about him. Um, if you watch, they were so worried about getting the guard in. He was sniping all the time. I think he's that was a really big selection for for him today. I thought he was amazing. Yeah, I thought he did a lot of good stuff. However, I picked this up at half time when England had to go to the front and then he had to do long left hand passes. A couple of them were really sort of high up there for Ford, and I think one went to maybe Earl or somebody else instead. And that just slowed England's attack. But that's really, you know, that's the fine detail. Generally, I agree. I thought England's pace of ball and then Mitchell moving on to it was a real, real threat, which um, Ireland were rightly worried about. Yeah, you could see. Yeah. I mean, at one stage, I didn't think Danny was going to get on to get his 100th cap, but um, did and um, did really well. Although, I mean, I couldn't believe he did that box kick. When all everything that we spoke about last week was or the other week, and he came on and it was like, "What are you? Why are you box box kicking?" And then after that, he they they just attacked and he was he was really good and, and part of uh, the the uh, we'll get into it in a second how they won the game, but um, that bit of play at the end was rehearsed and very very good. Yeah, I mean, so Ben Earl scored sometime during the second half after some good forward drives. Just a brilliant example of using somebody else's momentum against them. Like he just waited for Aki to sort of commit to the tackle and he almost kind of skirted around it, just got his feet out of the way. I had enough mm. space to get over and score the try. But the Furbank try for me was what England rugby should look like. So initial uh, kick receipt and then show an ambition to try and get up the middle of the park. I think it was Faye Waboso who actually had the final carry in that move. And again, just his extra bit of power, just his extra little bit of drive to not accept a tackle, got England on the front foot. And then you saw it. You saw all the players that were involved in the next bit recognise that it was on. Like Jamie George was the first receiver and he'd already scanned. He'd already looked. Um, and then the ball got moved through to, I'm not sure who was out the back, maybe Marcus, I can't remember who it was. Um, on to George Martin. He maybe could have passed before contact, but got the offload afterwards anyway. And then great hands by Atoje to Furbank, who was absolutely rasping his way around the outside. So it was just a quick counter-attack, see where the space is and move the ball there quickly. And they nailed it. So um, it was a quality try. Simple. Yeah, simple. It's kind of, you know, reminds you, I can't remember what our call was in the Easter days. It was a fire. I can't remember, but basically... If you had an overlap and and the, and it was on, the, the call came in fire, and everyone knew what was going to happen. You know, it wasn't it wasn't run across the pitch. It was we have got an overlap, run hard lines, get the ball to the wingers. You know, and and nine times out of ten you'd score. And we you know, we said the whole time Furbank is a class class attacking player, um, and uh, took his took his opportunity very very well. Um, I think there was a foot and touch though. A little bit before that, but we won't go into that. We won't go into that. Be humble. Be humble. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you got the ball back after the foot in touch, and then it was it was after that anyway. So um, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how many phases you can go back if, if it's not foul play anyway. But um, Ireland, it, it, Ireland had the ball in between. Freeman threw it back inside. Ireland re regathered the ball. Yeah, so Ireland yeah, had the ball so you, in between. So you, can, you can't go back past whatever many phases anyway. So it does it, it does it, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying it does it doesn't. I think it was the fact that they replayed us. Yeah. During, <laughs> during I was like, when did that happen? And then because he yeah. wasn't anywhere near touch. But you're right. It was ages before that. It was, it was a while before. Yeah. Way before that. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, but then after that, Ireland came back and got the lead again through the second James Lowe try. Um, Swing, what did you like? About, what did you like about that one, Elka? What I liked everything about it except for the uh, misconversion. Um, no, it was it was great <laughs> yeah. finish. 
Yeah, it was costly, wasn't it? Um, uh, low was low was quality, um, but it was just yeah, great play again. Um, sort of uh, what I said earlier, sort of um, using the rush defense against them and having players in certain positions, and you know, you could see it. They, they it, it, it's almost like it's rehearsed. It's really weird. They did it in the first half towards the end of the the first half as well, where it, it feels almost like it's rehearsed, but it's. But it's in open play. It's, it's it's weird stuff. But no, took took it really well, and we were speaking off, off before we went up um, recording um, off air that uh, you know the, the when we scored that uh, the the UK ITV commentator was going bananas saying that that could be the championship score. I was like, no, <laughs> just four or five minutes left, um, and he's missed the conversion. There's only two points in it. Elliot Daly could pop up here or um so something else could happen yeah well he had missed the conversion but <clears throat> so had george ford earlier in the game and a very kickable penalty as well so yeah i think you know, well, not really no uh no. but then as you say elliot daly on the pitch itoji massages a penalty uh in that situation and i mean we've seen daly kick those so many so many times that i, I mean i didn't expect it to go over but if it had done i wouldn't have been surprised either he missed, unfortunately, for England fans. Although, you know, that just set up an even more dramatic finish. And previous, <laughs> before the game, I kind of potentially predicted that Danny Kerr comes on for his 100th, 100th cap and creates the winning score. He tried a little attacking kick down the blind side, which got blocked. Um, but then England sort of got possession back, penalty advantage, second penalty advantage, which was, that second one was maybe a bit harsh on Tyburn in particular, I think. I think he was definitely in there on the ball quite early. But I don't think it made any difference, really. I think Marcus was going for that drop goal at that situation in any case. Uh, and he, uh, yeah, he banged it over, sending Twickenham absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like I put the curse on this one in our pre-pods, uh, pre-game amble, because I, when you said about that, then I took the piss and said, Oh no! Well, it might be a penalty or a drop goal twin by a point <laughs> because all the Quins boys will be on. Yeah, yeah, right, whatever. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, it came back to bite me in the arse. And listen, um, you know, uh, watch watch that last bit of play. That's rehearsed. That drop goal's rehearsed. You know, if you watch it, watch Marler. Marler's calling for the ball, and the and um. Uh, uh, DC puts it between the two runners to to um, to Marcus in 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 the pocket. That's first. They they practiced that all week, and um, whatever call it is, um, and took it really really well. And the game is done and dead, and the whole Grand Slam dream is over, baby. It's done. Yeah, yeah. I you know as much as I'm obviously delighted for England, I also feel for Ireland hugely. I mean, incredible team, been on an incredible run. Eleven. Uh, Six Nations games wins in a row, which is a joint record. Um, so, yeah, I mean, congratulations to Ireland for, for what they've achieved running up to this fixture. Yeah, and listen, you know, um, a Grand Slam is hugely, hugely difficult. And, um, you know, to think that teams can just rock up and and do it. You know, this is, this is why our sport is so amazing and why people should get into it it's 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 because you know on paper this this game was done you know um you you know man on man you know using form as a guide and everything else but then you know rugby is one of the few sports where actually emotion plays a huge part of it you know the guys are all at a level they're all um, physically at a level, you know, they're probably all lifting around the same and all the different things. They, they probably have a, a around the same amount of hours they played, whatever you know, fitness levels. If they on their yo yo scores are probably all around a level, but it's who can harness and and bring emotion and control, and that's why the sport is just dreamy to me. And look, I'm absolutely, I'm gutted, absolutely gutted. Um, but I'm also really happy because you know, living in the in in England and um, the the sport needs this. Um, and um, you you don't need to be play, have brass bands and playing music and all this other crap that's going around. You just need 
awesome games out of that. And any any new anybody that never seen a game before would have gone to that and gone, oh my god, that was amazing. People are getting carried off unconscious. There's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. There's there's miss kicks. There's kicks. There's you know it's just quality. And and the the big dogs in town arrived up and got their arses handed to them. You know it's it's brilliant. And you know sleeping giant and, and England are back. So unfortunately. Um, this pod will go out after um, our, our, the one we've done already, TT. But uh, unfortunately, um, Scotland have messed the whole bloody thing up, and um, <laughs> uh, it's all done, done and dusted. Anyway, no, I'm joking. And next week, obviously, is now back in back in the uh, the hands of whoever takes their opportunity in Lansdowne Road. <laughs> Absolutely. I could not sum it up any better than that. So we'll leave it there. But what do you think at home? What were the key points of this game that maybe we've missed out on? Any key performers on either side that you think had really good games that, that you'd like to highlight? We'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. And we'll join you there for a conversation where both myself and Elko have been learning a hell of a lot from you guys as well. So thank you so much for that. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.